Welcome to the uh, Senaatszaal of our university. Uh, behind me, you can actually see a couple of uh, black and white uh, images. Uh, some of my predecessors, I'm the, the current rector of the university, and I have the privilege uh, to welcome you here uh, this afternoon. A special welcome to all of you, um, the nominees in particular, and uh, I hope that we can have a, a very good Marina van Damme award uh, session. Unfortunately, we had to do it in a very low density uh, uh, setting because of the corona crisis that we have. Um, the, the current uh, infection numbers are, are sort of exponentially growing. It's really a concern, I think. So it's good that we can have it here in a, this one and a half meter setting uh, today. Um, the Marina van Damme grant, I think it's a very important uh, grant uh, for our university. It really stimulates the careers of, uh, of female scientists and females that, that have graduated from our university. Uh, it fits within the, uh, the policy that we have at the university. I guess many of you have noticed it that we've taken special measures to, uh, uh, to increase uh, the number of female scientists that we have at this university. And unfortunately, we still have a significant underrepresentation, in particular in the associate and full professor uh, uh, levels. And the Marina, Carana, uh, Marina van Damme uh, grant, I think, can really help the next steps in the career of uh, females. Um, also, a special uh, welcome uh, to the jury, jury members and those who have been involved in and supervising uh, uh, the, the candidates that we, that we see today. Um, and actually, I will have a, a short interview with the chair of the, uh, of the jury. Unfortunately, uh, because of this uh, corona situation, uh, Marina van Damme herself was unable to make it uh, to this uh, physical uh, meeting, uh, and we can fully appreciate uh, that. Uh, but she's here, uh, although uh, remotely kind of like the way we currently have to teach and educate our students as well. Most of them spend their time behind the screen, unfortunately. Uh, we hope that we can get back to a normal situation uh, soon, but it most likely will take a while. Um, but, it, but even though she is here remotely, she also has a, a message uh, for us. And so I'd like to, uh, to invite her to say a few words to us. I'd first like to tell you that my parents were born both before 1900 in a very, very small village in the southwest part of the Netherlands. They were able, raising four children, of which I'm one, uh, into people who had a very good high school education. In my case, my results from the high school were that good that I received a rent-free loan of the government to start a study at the university. It was a different time from now. There were only 50 girls studying in Delft with 5,000 boys studying there. At that time, the only woman active in industry in the Netherlands at this level. What I really wanted, that is, that more women would have the possibility to get a business work, a work in the labor force which made it possible for them to further develop them, themselves to a more interesting function than where they were starting and mainly were kept for the rest of their lifetime. The real work has to be done by the, the women themselves because it's not a grant, it's not an award. It is really a scholarship which they have been asking for and they had to be working very, very hard to achieve their goals and they have to continue their work to really make their ambitions true. I'd like to thank 
all universities for their willingness they expressed to continue with the organization of the fund after my death. I'm really very, very grateful for that. Thank you. Um, one of the most difficult things uh, to do is that you have a number of nominees and then you have to make a selection out of these uh, nominees. And so we always install a jury for that. And we're very privileged that we can have the, the chair of the jury with us uh, today, Elena. Um, we're very happy that you can be here and, and we'd like to learn a bit more about how, how this materialized uh, in your setting. Could you please come forward and, and share it with me? Uh, Professor Elena Lomonova mm -hmm. is uh, uh, a professor in the electrical engineering department and was indeed the chair of this, uh, of this jury. And I have a few questions uh, to you related to this uh, Marina van Gramma grant. Um, so what's the importance of this grant to our university? Um, I think uh, Eindhoven University makes a very uh, promising and a very challenging task in promoting the females, uh, our graduate females uh, from different levels, because the rules are such that everyone who graduated from our university can apply for this grant. And uh, like Marie, uh, Marina van Damme told, it's not a grant, it's a scholarship. Yeah. So it's a real promotion engineering career and in the future vision of the professional life. Yeah. So how many applicants did you have uh, this year? This year was uh, amazingly exceptional. So what um, was surprised us that until almost last days, uh, we did not receive many applications. And suddenly, during the last week, we uh, received quite a number of them, and even more than during last year. So totally, it was 17 applications. Oh, OK, great. In spite of Corona time. That's great, yeah. So how did you evaluate all these applications? That's probably the most difficult part of it. Well, I would like to thank also the people who are involved in this process. It's not only jury committee, it's also well-prepared uh, organization who is preparing the documents which are available for the members of the jury uh, through the OneDrive. We can, uh, first of all, read the, the personal documents, applications, motivation letters of the applicants. Of course, the, later the jury members are gathered together. This year it was online, unfortunately, but we were very well prepared in advance. And the evaluation, we are ranking uh, according to several criteria, which are clearly described by the rules of Ma the foundation of Marine, uh, Marine Van Damme. And according to these criteria, we are selecting several uh, uh, candidates, and then yeah, yeah. The, the best of the best, are, we are voting yeah. accordingly with the, uh, personal motivation yeah. as members of the yeah. jury. And the top two nominees uh, basically are known yes. and are in the audience. Um, you've seen all these applications. Um, what is it, some, is there something in particular that you would like to share with us? having seen all these applications? Uh, very shortly might be to tell that I'm, I, I'm quite uh, experienced in that uh, jury for many years already. And uh, I have, a, we as the members of the jury, we have a feeling that it's a little bit changed the landscape. Again, might be because of difficult time of Corona, but in innovation or novel ideas came to, to the, um, in this year, so it's during this year, uh, mainly with uh, with social importance, uh, uh, ability to transfer not only to gain the knowledge but to transfer the knowledge to the society. It's yeah. also very appealing. This year, the, the landscape of applications also significantly yeah. changed. Yeah. See, that's sort of, I think, uh, consistent with what we see with many of our students as well. They are becoming more and more purpose-driven, if you want. They want to have an impact, not just solve something, some complicated thing, but also would like to have an impact on society. So thank you very much for sharing that information uh, with us, uh, because we fully understand how important 
uh, the grant or, or scholarship uh, is uh, for, for the individuals. Um, to make it a bit more concrete, um, we have a couple of uh, uh, videos uh, from previous uh, uh, grant winners. Hello, my name is Nicole Segers and I'm the 2012 winner at Technische Universiteit Eindhoven. Thanks to the Marina van Damme grant, I've been able to make huge steps. Not only did I get to work on circular economy in construction, I also studied immunity to change. Psychology of social innovation, oh, it intrigues me deeply, you know. I really discovered my passion. And as an entrepreneur, I'm now really working hard on sustainability with a smile, or in Dutch, duurzaamheid met een lach. Hi, my name is Lisanne van Oppen and I graduated as a biomedical engineer at the Eindhoven University of Technology. And in 2016, uh, I applied for the Marina van Damme grant uh, to visit an institute in bioengineering in Barcelona to learn a new uh, microscopy technique. And I was uh, very happy and grateful that I was awarded uh, with the grant to enable this project. Hi, my name is Milu Feit and I work as a PhD candidate at the TU Eindhoven. I applied for the Marina van Damme grant and won the prize in 2018. My plan with the grant is to go to UC Berkeley in the USA to investigate and develop novel technologies that can improve our mental health care. Becoming a member of the Marine van Damme network has already given me the opportunity to meet other ambitious female engineers whose stories inspire me to keep pursuing my goals. Therefore, I'm very grateful and I hope that the Marine van Damme grant will keep motivating other women to pursue their goals in the future. It's great uh, to see uh, this because these people have really used a scholarship to take the next step uh, in their career and I think they're working on wonderful uh, uh, subjects and they can ultimately, I think, have a significant impact on what we do um, in, in life. Um, this year we go to the 13th winner of the, um, of the uh, Marina van Damme Award. Um, and there were two... Uh, uh, two applicants that are sort of in this, out of the 17, you selected the two, the runner-up and, uh, and the winner. Um, the two that stood out were uh, Regine Sumo and uh, Federica Samadi. Uh, both of the nominees uh, will give a short uh, pitch, uh, pitch presentation. Um, Federica is here in person. Unfortunately, uh, Regine uh, was unable to travel uh, to the Netherlands because of all the travel restrictions that we have uh, today because of the corona crisis, but she will deliver a pitch uh, uh, online. But now I would like to invite uh, Federica to come forward and give your pitch. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Federica Samali, and I come from Italy, Rome, where I received my master's degree in biomedical engineering. Immediately after, I moved to Eindhoven to pursue my PDM degree in healthcare system design and then a PhD in electrical engineering. During my PDM and uh, PhD, I've been focusing on a topic that affects millions of women around the world, infertility and pregnancy problems. During my measurements in the hospital, I could perceive the pain and frustration of these women. I didn't expect this could happen to me, change it dramatically in my life to the point of breaking down. Um, I started regaining motivation through research uh, with my postdoc position in earlier detection of cardiovascular disease in collaboration with Eindhoven, uh, with, uh, sorry, Katerina Hospital in Eindhoven. I was trying to keep my enthusiasm, but all the positive aspects of being a postdoc turned into negative ones exacerbated by limited chances for a stable academic position, brevity of contract, uncertain future and low salary, and become overqualified for a job in an industry. 
I lost my drive to work and I felt a failure as a woman and engineer. But, as Einstein said, life is like riding a bicycle, and if you want to stay in balance, you have to move. Inspired by that, I collected all my strength and I tried to move on. To this end, I applied for the Marina van Damme grant. If I'm given the opportunity, I would like to use this grant to give shape and direction to my professional career by pursuing my ambition of becoming a clinical physicist, establishing myself as a solid bridge between medicine and engineering. I would like to achieve that by creating a tight collaboration with doctors, researching new technologies, conducting clinical trials, helping in clinical decision-making, analyzing biomedical signals, be involved in professional training and teaching, and also attending the Dutch courses, which is fundamental to work in a hospital environment. I would like to focus on my professional development, maximizing my ability to pursue a high-level biomedical research career in a hospital by enrolling in a specific courses and training. To conclude, the Marina van Damme grant is fundamental for my career breakthrough. It would help me regain confidence in myself as a woman first, in my skills as a biomedical engineer, and gain financial independence. I strongly believe that a satisfying job, along with motherhood, adds to the completeness of being a woman. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for giving me this great opportunity. Thank you. The, um, like I said already, Regine uh, was unable to be here live, uh, but nevertheless she has a pitch that we would like to present that to you as well. Can I start? Yes, you can. Yes, okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm very sorry I couldn't be there live, unfortunately, but I'm very grateful I could this online. First of all, I'd like to uh, thank Marina Pondoma for, for this opportunity. I really admire what you have achieved so far and what you mean for the, um, for the women in the society. I hope one day that um, I can look back at my career and say that I... That I um, I did the same thing, and with the idea that I'm here going to present, I hope this will be a very small step towards uh, achieving that. Um, 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 originally, I was born in Iraq. I came to the Netherlands at the age of seven, and I received my PhD at Technische uh, Universiteit van Eindhoven in 2014. I'm now going to share my screen so that you can see the page. So what I'm going to present here today is MediConnect. MediConnect is an e-health uh, project. Um, it all started when I was looking at the uh, rural numbers and infant mortality rate in the Middle East and Central Asia, where we see that the infant mortality rate is significantly higher than what we observe um, across the world. Um, and especially when you deep dive into the data of healthcare supply in this region, we see that the healthcare supply is inefficient, costly, and difficult to access. For example, the average physician density is lower than the world average, and it's even lower than required by WHO to achieve coverage of primary healthcare needs. Whereas if we compare this to the healthcare supply in Western countries, such as OECD country, we see that there's sufficient supply of quality health care and the average physician density is significantly higher than in rural areas in Central Asia and the Middle East. So I thought, why not bring these points together? And I came up with MediConnect. MediConnect is a telemedicine company, particularly focused on pregnant women. And why pregnant women? Because research has shown that telemedicine for pregnant women before and after birth significantly lowers infant mortality rate. Um, this is even more true for high-risk pregnant women in these rural areas, as this group can be closely monitored without having to travel to the hospital. You might think, okay, what is the deal? They can travel, but no, sometimes it might take more than a day for these women to get to the hospital. So, early on, seeing the daily movements, seeing the risks, um, to tell these women so that they can go and plan ahead and go um, to the doctors or the hospitals in another city far away from where they live. 
So the innovativeness of Maybe Connect lies in multiple factors, but the ones I would like to highlight are that it's a cheaper way of quality healthcare and it's convenient for patients in rural areas. Um, Maybe Connect will connect these pregnant women with Western doctors, but also doctors in their areas as well. In addition to that, the aim is to collaborate with humanitarian health movements, such as the Red Cross, so that they can provide their services for these women without necessarily having to travel to these often war zones. And at the later stage, the aim is also to uh, collaborate with other high-tech uh, e-health apps um, and um, integrate it into the MediConnect app. One of them is, for example, the portable sonographies, which have been recently developed by Philips, so that these portable sonographies can either be used by the women or the midwives uh, who live at the same village. And this way they can track data real life and send the data on distance to a doctor so that they can see and track the health of the baby and the mother. So the Molina Long Grant will be used to transform the current prototype, which I have already developed, into a workable app to be accessed via a smartphone by these women, hopefully. Um, I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Well, I think these two uh, pictures uh, clearly show that you really have a personal motivation in what you would like to achieve. And both examples, I say, beautiful examples of purpose-driven uh, things that you would like to do in the future. So I really enjoyed uh, listening to them. Um, but now it's also the moment that we announced uh, the winner of, uh, of this year. And, uh, well, the jury has made this selection, and the Marina van Damme grant of this year, 2020, and the winner is uh, Regine Sumo. Unfortunately, you're far away, but uh, you were live presence uh, in this uh, meeting. Yeah. I, I have my sister there who can, who can come on behalf of me. Yeah, yeah. Which also means uh, that the runner-up of this year is uh, Frederik Samari. Congratulations uh, with that, which I think is also a, a very important uh, achievement. Um, so first, I would like to, you, uh, Frederik, to, to come forward and, and take the check. Unfortunately, I cannot give it to you uh, in, a, in person, but... Uh, yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Um, now, unfortunately... Uh, uh, oh, now she's gone. Uh, I thought she was uh, behind me. Ah, there you are. You're still there. Um, yes, <laughs> I really would like to congratulate you. Uh, thank you so Being much. the winner thank of the grant of, uh, of this year. Um, uh, we're very pleased that one of your sisters is willing to receive the reward, uh, replacing you for the time being, but I'm yeah, quite I sure... Like, so <laughs> but you'll find a way uh, to transfer uh, whatever is involved. So can you please come forward? And um, there's a... And also the, the statue, if you could pick up the statue as well, because there's a statue with it. And you can give it a very special place. Like this, it's not very much, but if you turn it around, you know. The <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Once again, uh, congratulations. I really hope that you can inject, you, you use the funding uh, for the purpose that you have in mind and make the step that you would like to make. And the same thing holds for you. Uh, I really hope that it helps you to make the step that you would like to make in your career. Um, this is at the end of the ceremony. I really would like to thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed it. People at home or from far away, I hope you enjoyed it as well. I think we have two outstanding uh, people that have received uh, a, a scholarship uh, from the Marina uh, von, Grant, uh, von Damme grant. Um, and uh, looking forward to see you soon again. Thank you for being here. Yeah.